Hi there, this is Shauna from The Foil Fox. Thanks so much for joining me today. This um, video concentrates on the beautiful bouquet and flower pot that's a new stamp and die set by Ink to Paper slash Paper Tray Ink. It has a lot of other accessories to it. As you can see, it has, you can see it there with the slider. We'll see how that works later. But first, I'll acquaint you with the, the uh, products here. Here are the stamps that you get, and they come in that wonderful fold and hold and flow, fold um, pouch. And then here is the matching dies. And this is the beautiful bouquet background die, um, and you'll see how important that will be. And then I'm going to use that little flower uh, leaf, excuse me, uh, as well. And here is the flower pot that creates the pot or, or the vase, however you want to say it. But let's get started with the um, flower pot. I've got so, cut it out of some Nina white cardstock, and um, you can see how this all comes together like this. But for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to color it. And I'm using two inks by Paper Tray. One of them is Soft Stone, which I'm going to start with. And I'm going to work my way around, blending on some of the ink. It hardly seems like it's going on at first because it's a light color. But I'm working my way towards the center. But I'm not going to color the center um, completely. I want some of that to stay white. Now, so I don't smudge the ink, I'm using a post-it note to um, put my fingers on and hold down um, this while I'm working. And then now that I've gone around with the soft stone, I'm going to uh, use a weather vane for the edges just to darken them. And it really creates a, a nice um, kind of depth and dimension and interest to your flower pot. And then after this gets done, there's one more um, step we're going to do, well actually two, that I think um, add a little bit more character as well. So I'm going to do the same here first to the um, top. And then now I'm taking, um, this is loosely woven also by Paper Tray slash Ink to Paper. And um, I love this stamp. It's one of my very favorite background stamps. It can be used in so many different ways. So I'm taking those same inks. This is soft stone. And I'm just adding just tiny bits of also of weather vane. And I'm smoothing it out with my fingers because I don't want any hard um, lines. And I'm just going to kind of, as you can see, dab it around. And it's all right that some of it is lighter uh, and some of it's darker. That's the whole idea it works out um, giving it this little bit of texture um, and interest to your pot it makes it look more lifelike I think and I'm just dabbing this around and I'm gonna do um, the same to the top to this pot and you can see I'm folding this as well just so I'm not getting any really hard hard lines and you can continue doing this until you're satisfied. You can see um, that I always, whenever I re-ink it, I do use my finger to kind of smooth it out because I want to smooth out that ink. With that done, now I'm going to um, take a, a some texture paste. This is Ranger Opaque. Um, white texture paste and what I'm using here now you can use a stencil or you can actually just leave it and not do this step but um, this is uh, tape for taping up sheetrock and you can get it at the hardware store I will have it linked in the supply list which you can find the, um, the link down below and you can click on that and it'll have a complete supply list as well as some close-ups but also it'll show you where you can get this any hardware store will have it. It's self-adhesive, and as you can see, I can use it over and over. This stuff is fantastic for putting down some texture. And I'm just randomly putting in some of this um, white texture paste. I don't know how much detail you can see, but it really adds to um, the look of the vase, and it makes it even more lifelike. And it's super easy to apply. Don't put, as you can see, I'm putting a tiny bit of texture paste. It requires very, very little. Now, always put your lid on your texture paste. You don't want that to dry out. 
and this dries really really fast the the texture paste does so we can get right to work on that but for right now I'm going to use these stamps and I'm going to take every one of these stamps or not every one but all the ones I'm going to use and I put it in my stamp uh, platform along with some Bristol smooth paper. This is Cornanor, and I happen to love this particular Bristol paper. You can use um, Nina White cardstock if you'd like, but I happen to like the Bristol paper. It I think the ink goes on a little smoother. So I'm going to ink this starting with the big flower, and I use several different inks. I'm starting out with pale uh, peony, and I stamp it a few times. Then I'll go. Um, and I, when I uh, add an extra color, the next one I'm going to use is Hibiscus bur Burst. And uh, I'm going to just smooth it out with my finger every time. Because again, I don't want any hard lines. I don't want any of the square of the cube to show up on my flower. But by doing this, by blending these colors like this, this one is Raspberry Fizz, by the way. And um, I'm just putting it around the edges in the center. And it really adds as a, a real dimension to your stamping. And it looks like, um, it kind of looks like watercolor, which is really cool. Um, I really like uh, this, this technique. And I'm going to do that with most all of these pieces. So I'm going to go to the next flower, which I'm using Lavender Moon. And then for the darker um, shading part of it, um, Plum Pudding. And I always put the darker shade in the center and then around the edges just to give um, that little extra dimension. Now you will find all of these supply listed, um, like I say, in the blog. But also at the end of this video, I did list all the inks that I use so that you don't have to worry. You don't have to click write these down if you're interested in them. You can find them all at the end of the video, you can kind of pause there if you want and write them down or take a screenshot, whatever works for you. Um, or like I say, you can always go to our blog. We have lots and lots of um, close-ups there and uh, a little bit more description and also a, a very, very complete supply list. And so I'm gonna go on to uh, stamping those little star flowers. I'm using for the star flowers, um, Sweet Blush and Pale Peony. Oh, I'm sorry. I misspoke. I'm not using those. I am using uh, lemon tart and a bright um, buttercup. Sorry about that. That's why you need to go to the, the end of the video and see uh, the colors. And then now I'm doing these tulips. Now these are sweet blush and pale peony. And they just give a really nice... Um, look to to and dimension to these flowers then going on to the leaves for the leaves i'm using for the lighter colors i'm using spring moss and new leaf and then for the darker ones i'm using uh, ocean tides which is one of my favorites with a little bit of new leaf and you can see i chose to put all the stamps together here on one sheet because I can just do them all at one time because there's so many of them. It I found it to be more efficient, but it's certainly do it the way that works best for you. Um, and then I find that when I've stamped them all like this, you can't do it with every project, but this one is ideal for that. By the way, you see me wiping off the edges. Be sure not to color anything around you accidentally. So kind of wipe down those stamps that are around the ones that you're stamping just so that you haven't touched something, touched a stamp that you didn't mean to. So I always keep a uh, by bee wipe in my hand and just ready to just wipe that down. You can see I did touch um, the little bit of green onto that flower, but I'm going to fix it by adding a little bit of raspberry fizz and you'll never know the difference. I'm wiping that down on the edges so I don't get pink onto the green. And now I'm gonna move on to the, like I say, to these um, other leaves, which I'm using Ocean Tide and New Leaf. Now that those are all stamped, I'm going to move on um, to um, the um, 
buds here and those buds are so cute and I used autumn rose for those and then weather vane for the berries. I think that's a very nice uh, combination. And then with, um, I'm just going to re-stamp this one more time and then we're going to be uh, pretty much done with all of our stamping and then I can um, take out these that we've all stamped them and this is why I do them all together when I'm doing a project like this it works out really nicely and so I'm taking the die set that I have all cut apart and I'm attaching them with a little bit of washi tape and I've put all of my dies onto a magnetic panel just so that I can keep them all neat uh, and together now a few of these dies are solid. Most of them you can see through, so the positioning is very easy. But um, I don't know about you, but sometimes when they're solid, I can't, um, I don't always get it right when I cut them. So um, the way that I check to make sure that they are working is I use a little pencil and I mark each side and then pull it away and see if it looks like it's positioned right. And if it is, then, um, I will uh, go ahead and put them there. Otherwise, I'll make an adjustment. And then if there's a little bit of uh, pencil left over, then I just um, erase that. So here they are all cut out. And I also cut out that background, as you can see, out of white Nina cardstock. See how that, when you do them all together, the ties stay on this um, kind of framework. And so they keep them really nice. And then you can pop out all the pieces. So here is the background and you can see why it's so important. Now I have some tube glue there in case I want to use that, but I've decided that I'm going to use this tape runner that's uh, temporary at first and then as it sets it turns permanent. And I'm just putting a little bit on each of these pieces. I don't have to go all the way to the edges. In fact, I don't want to because I want to be able to tuck things um, in here and there and then move them if I get them wrong. Um, like here, I put the flower in the wrong place, so I have to move it over there. And, and this makes it really easy. And then if I do want to tuck things underneath, I use that X-Acto knife to just lift up the one piece so that I don't mess up the edges. And then here are the little um, star flowers. I forgot to put the centers in and there's um, a, a, actually a stamp included that gives you those little centers, which makes it so cute. And I put those in um, together. Now these stars are look the same, but they're just slightly different. So there's two different ones, it's two different um, flowers. And then those leaves, those um, that uh, trio of leaves that we cut out earlier um, just kind of I just put it in there um, because I wanted to fill that space up and then I'll put the um, berries um, over it as well as the um, the buds but I'm just tucking in those leaves and I have my um, exacto knife with me just in case I need to lift up a little bit of an edge and it is just like a puzzle. You just um, put them all together here and um, create a beautiful, when you're done, you have a beautiful um, display of flowers. And then they all hold together because they're sitting on this platform, on this background. I think that's awesome. I'm gonna put in the last bits here. One of my very favorite things is putting in those buds. They just add a little burst of color Once everything is in place, then we'll be able to um, go on to the next step. A little tiny bit right there. And there we go. That's all done. And so now I have the pieces together. I have the slider, which I cut one out. That just shows you the die. And then we have the pot still in two pieces. Um, and I'll show you how to put that together. Now you can use the slider where it, you don't use the top. You don't have to use the top. You can just use it like this and then adhere the um, display of flowers to the pot and it slides from the back. Or um, you can use that top or lip to the pot. Now this is a project I did for a paper tray. You can uh, see that over on their channel and I'll link to uh, show you another picture of it in a minute. But that one, um, I put the um, flowers onto 
the uh, slider and then the whole thing slides into the pot. See how that works right there? It slides, the whole thing slides in. Where this one, I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the sides. And um, so I'm creating a little pouch, making sure that the slider still fits. Um, but I am going to use that lip. See, I can use it just like that. Just adhere the flowers to the pot and we're good to go. But I'm going to take this extra step and put this um, top on. I'm cutting that uh, opening um, a little bit so that I can make sure that the slider fits in. Putting on some adhesive and then attaching it to uh, the main part of the pot. And now um, I have a nice pouch. You can see there uh, so that the slider fits in very nicely and easily. Now these flowers will attach to the pot where the green one or the kind of uh, aqua misty color uh, one that you see onto the right that will then the flowers are attached to the slider and the whole thing slides out. So there's the display. Isn't that pretty? Now here's I um, did the um, use that tag for um, that project I did for paper tray and I'm using this tag which is charming tags um, for this one so I'm going to I have a piece of black cardstock I took a sentiment from the stamp set taking some um, Versamark ink and stamping it a couple of times that's why I put it in the stamp platform and then I'm going to take it out and um, sprinkle it with um, white embossing powder and then if you want to um, get rid of all those little errant pieces of um, white embossing powder, I use sometimes an X-Acto knife to get into small areas or a little tiny brush. Here I, I have used both. Just brush them away. And then um, I heat emboss it, believe it or not, quick like that. And then um, now I'm cutting out that um, charming tag, it's called. And then I use that bow. You see it there. That bow is from... Um, birthday bouquets that set that came out um, not too long ago you can see that on our website here I'm tucking in that um, that slider you can see I put a gift card in there so you can see how that works here again is that one where the flowers are attached to the slider this one the flowers are attached to the pot so I'm putting the um, tag in place and the little bow and there we have it and the slider slides right into the pot and you can put a put a greeting or a sentiment on the back as well i made a vellum envelope and i lettered it with a no blake pen and ink um and um i put the um you could see it there just briefly where the flowers show through to the vellum if you don't want to make your own envelope there are there is an assortment of five envelopes you can get that are square that will fit this that's on our blog as well or um, that is from paper tray now here is that gorgeous display of flowers and with its pot and its sentiment and it's so beautiful um, but remember you can use this stamp and die set for many different things not just this project and um, here it is with the slider and then with the envelope, just to kind of give you a complete look. And then I snuck in this picture. This is, again, this is one that I did for Paper Tray. You will see it on their channel um, right away, if not already. And um, then, as promised, here is the supply list. This has most everything, um, but it doesn't have every little tiny thing, but most everything. And um, if you want to see every, um, item on the supply list pop over to our blog the link is down below and I want to thank you so much for being with us today uh, I enjoyed it I hope you did too if you did please give us a thumbs up and if you haven't already I we'd be over the moon if you would subscribe thanks so much and we'll see you next time